Hey, mamas, this is for you and to do all by yourself or go get the girly girls because this is a totally girly girl painting. And let's get our paint on and our drinks on and just sit back and relax. Maybe grab a snack and you can have some fun girl time or fun alone time. Um, I have a canvas I'm working on today. You could have any kind of paint surface, uh, paint paper, cardboard. You could have... Um, uh, what? Let's see. Some, um, just anything to paint on, right? An old canvas. You want to paint over it, okay? Then I am going to sketch out my design real quick first. I'm going to use a marker so you can see what I'm doing, a permanent marker. You may want to use a pencil and definitely sketch super duper soft because it's hard to erase on canvas. And if you're working on canvas, you want to use acrylic paints because they work the best on canvas. Although I have learned you can use watercolor paints on canvas as well. I love Arizona green tea and this is not a commercial for them, but I love it and I love the can. It's so pretty. Okay, back on track. Um, us artists tend to do that. You're also going to want a paint plate and a water cup, not for drinking. That one's for cleaning your brush. So you need a different water cup for drinking. I have um, some napkins as well. And then I have my little acrylic paints in the tin. So if you were to order an art kit from me, it would come with a canvas that could be blank or pre-drawn. Typically we do pre-drawn. The paints, the brushes, the napkins, the paint plate, um, and some helpful tips um, on paper. So we're going to start with our drawing first. Like I said, this is total girly girl, total simple. You could go way more realistic if you want, but I want to keep it super simple since our littles might be painting with us, right? Okay, are we ready? I am going to start with the head of the unicorn. We're doing a unicorn. Okay, um, so I've got the head and I'm going to do just sort of a simple kind of ovalish type line and it is angled a little, right? And then I am going to do the curved part of her mouth area and her nose and her grin, just like that. I'm telling you, super simple and super girly. Um, now, of course, you guys could, um, like I said, go more detail if you want to. Now, why not? since we're being creative here, put a crown on her head. And we've got to show some of her ears. Her ears are kind of hiding behind the crown a little bit. So we have curve and curve. Remember to pause me at any time. And I am going to have her eyes closed, but you could draw her eyes open, of course. Okay, and then we have to have her unicorn horn, right? So she's kind of leaned forward on that. Curve, 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 curve. Now, you did yours with pencil, so you're able to erase right there. I am not, so I'm gonna grab my white out and there we go. Little white out there. Oh yes, perfect. Okay, now we need a body, don't we? Okay, and so I am gonna do a very just silly, simple body. Okay. And I'm going to give her a tail. Kind of is going off my canvas here, isn't it? So we do a curve and a curve, flip, curve. And then, of course, she's got to have legs. One, two, three, four. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to do just a little 
almost like a W or a wavy line. And then we've well, got to have her back legs back here as well, okay? Pause it there a second if you need to. And the bottom of those little feet. And then we've got to do the hoof lines. There we go. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, now she's missing her mane. Right, she's gotta have some sassy hair going on. Okay, now, oh, what am I doing? We need some ground. She can't just be floating in the air, can she? And then what if, if you want to, you don't have to, but what if we did curve, 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 make a U, make a U, and these are kind of like triangles, so let me show you up close, so you can see some little tulips. And I want in here it's gonna go off, 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 and back on. Okay. Ugh, that got a little squished. We want that to stay the same distance apart, but that's okay. So this is where my rainbow is gonna be. Okay. No. You guys, if you need to pause me and get caught up, now's the time because I'm so excited to get the painting part done. I think that this is just super fun for any kind of girly type girl, right? Um, little kids on up to adults, we broke it down super simple. Anytime you can break down something into lines and shapes, everybody's going to feel better about drawing it. If I would have just said, okay, draw a unicorn with some tulips and a rainbow, you probably would have had a little bit of a panic attack, right? Okay. Um, anytime I'm working in a background space, I like to use a little bit bigger brush. So this is a half inch flat brush and I hold my pen or my paintbrush right where the metal and the handle meet. So you can see on that side, the metal and the handle meet, just like you would hold a pencil. Some people do two fingers, some people do one. And um, I am going to put me, I'm gonna get me a glob of white out and put it over here. Then I'm gonna get me just a little bit of turquoise, talking chocolate chip amount, and mix that together. Now, if you are making your own color make sure that you make enough um, and I know our skies are not turquoise but I love turquoise and this is already an imaginary type painting so why not finish it out imaginary I like to paint my edges so I'm going to paint the very top and the sides just like that and I'm going to come around here. Ooh, be careful. If you turn your brush horizontal, it will make a thinner brush stroke than um, if you have it turned the other way. So you might think about that. I like to outline the area that I'm painting first, just like this, and then go in and paint it. And I'm not all about nice and smooth, so I just sort of swirl my brush everywhere. There we go. All right. There. And then we outline around her on this side. Now, if you accidentally paint the Sharpie, which you will, it's almost impossible to not, um, what you could totally do is go back at the very end when this is 100% dry, so maybe even like the next day, um, you can go back and re-sharpie your sharpie lines. Now, um, if you don't trust yourself getting in these smaller spaces with your bigger brush, then switch 
to your um, one of your smaller ones, like maybe your medium pointy brush, right? I always like to have different size brushes with me because when I'm painting a different size area, it's kind of like, you know, when you're doing woodwork, you have to have the right tools or you're not going to be able to get the job done. So um, if I don't have the right paintbrush, I can't get my painting done how I want it to be done. So if you notice, like if you're painting with your kiddos and you notice that they're getting paint everywhere they shouldn't be, just swap them out brushes and give them a smaller brush. And plus it will take them a little bit longer because they paint way faster than we do. All right, so I got my sky all painted. Any spots that seem kind of see-through, you could always go back and add a quick little touch up where you need it okay all right so there is my background next i'm going to move on to the grass so i'm going to i think i'm going to keep my turquoise and i'm going to grab a little chunk of yellow and i'm going to mix that yellow into my turquoise and looky there we made a lime green that's because turquoise is like green and when green and yellow mix excuse me blue Turquoise is like blue and it's like green. So when you put yellow in, you're bound to get green, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully I didn't just confuse you. Okay, same rule. We're gonna outline and fill in just like that. Okay, outline and fill in. And if you wanted to do a little extra step, you could instead of, or I guess it's not an extra step, but a different step. How about we say it like that? Instead of painting like sweeping your brush, you could dab, 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 dab your brush Give your grass a oop. Don't dab your unicorn. I just dabbed my unicorn. But it gives your canvas a little texture, right? Which is kind of fun. So dab, 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 dab. Just like that. Now, because I had a little oopsie going on, all you have to do to fix your oopsie is you can take some paper towel, wrap it around your finger, dip it in your water cup, and then rub, rub, rub that oopsie. Then go to a clean spot and wipe. And then if you need to dry, you can also dry. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I am going to, I think I'm gonna make my unicorn pink, right? It's girly, why not? Or purple would be cute. Or we could do pink and purple. Okay. I might want to switch to my medium pointy brush for a minute at least. And I've got my pink. Mix, 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 mix. Now I really didn't have pink. This was from a previous painting, but how you get pink is white and red. You already knew that. All right. So now same rules. We're going to outline. outline even around the horn you could even try to outline around the eyes or just paint real soft on the eyes and then you could go back and um, resharpie and if you lose your sharpie lines and you get real frustrated um, you can turn the flashlight on on your phone and shine it behind your canvas and then the sharpie line comes right through Go figure, I had a high schooler teach me that. <laughs> all right, so we get this all filled in just like that, nice and smooth, kind of smooth out. Anytime you add white to a color, it's kind of cool because it, I'm gonna paint her nostrils to match because it makes the color not so see-through, which means you don't see your brush strokes as much. Okay, outline, outline, 
and fill in. Outline and fill in, outline and fill in. There we go. There we go. And we need some legs. And remember, the smaller the space, the smaller the brush you want to use. And you want to try to make your brush strokes match the direction that the lines are. So these lines are up and down, right? So I'm making my brush strokes be up and down. The line on the body was kind of a roundish, so I kind of, you know, went left and right and around to fill in the body part. The head was curved, so I curved it. Um, the background doesn't really have a direction necessarily, and so that's why I just kind of went this way and that way with it. Okay? So, oh, her little ears. Oh, those are real tiny. You might need the baby brush for that area. All right. I wish I had some gold glitter here so I could gold glitter her, her crown, but it's at my studio. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to keep this pink that I have. I'm going to add just a little bit more white to it, and I'm going to get it all back in a pile because I want to see how much I have, right? Kind of get it all back in a pile. And then I'm going to grab a chunk of purple and mix that in. And that definitely was not enough. So I'm going to grab some more and mix that in. It's always best to do just a little bit at a time when you're trying to mix colors. Um, you start with the lightest color and then you mix in the darker color a little bit at a time. Now I don't want to paint with a globby brush, so I roll my brush over just like that. And then I can use this color so it kind of matches the pink since I made it using the pink but I mixed purple in. Um, so it kind of feels like it's on the same value scale, right? There we go. nice and smooth and I kind of lost my smile but that's okay we'll bring it back out do the inside of her ears definitely want to use a baby brush for that I'm using my medium pointy brush because I have a very soft touch but if you don't have a very soft touch it's better to use a smaller brush and then her tail So I follow the curve, follow the curve, follow the curve, follow the curve. Okay. And I'm going to do her hair because I want her mane and her tail to match. Slow and steady with your outlining. There's no rush to get her finished. This is just great adult, child, bonding time, or great adult bring back those kiddo feeling time, right? Sometimes it's nice just to escape to kids' world. They've got it made. They have no clue they have it made. They just want to grow up, but they have it made. When you clean your brush, you really smush and swirl on the bottom of the cup, and then wipe, 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 wipe on the inside of the cup, and then dry your brush. If you do not dry your brush, you will wind up with water rolling down your canvas, which is super annoying. Okay, 
I need to let all this dry just for a minute. Oh, no, I know what I was going to do. I'm going to go straight purple. And I'm going to put some straight purple streaks into her tail, just like that. And I know it's blending, so it's not super noticeable. I wanted that to happen. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just kind of flick that brush. There we go. And then I'll do purple down here on her little hoofs. Hoofs, <laughs> hoofs, however you want to say that. How do you say that? Hoofs, hoofs, hooves. Guess it depends on what part of the country you're from, right? Okay. And there we go. Got them all painted in. Cutie, cute, cute. Okay. Now I am going to work on these little guys down here. So this green is um, too light. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use straight turquoise for the stem. Baby brush. So you stay in the lines. And then you could make your tulips whatever color you want. There's no wrong answer. That's why art is so awesome is because there's not a wrong answer. It's not like math where it has to be a certain way or a certain end result. Sometimes you can get to the same answer using different techniques with math, but you always have to have the same answer. But when it comes to art, my painting is not going to look like your painting. So our answers are not going to be the same. And that is awesome because I don't want yours to look like mine. And, or mine to look like yours, like I want it to be its own painting, right? Because I am my own special person. I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to take, um, I've got some white right here and mix some yellow and white together. I'm going to get just a little bit more white in there. Mix, 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 mix. So this makes my yellow not so see-through. And paint my little tulips yellow. And my paint is not going on real thick. I'm just putting a nice, even, just regular layer on, just like that. And um, let's think. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So it's almost in the middle of the rainbow, isn't it? And if you wanted to go ahead and divide your rainbow into six sections, you could. It's up to you. Um, I am going to just go ahead. I know that the yellow is just a little bit above where the center is. Now, if it bothers you to start with the middle of the rainbow, don't. You can, you can wait and uh, go ahead and, and work on the top part. But I thought I would just do that middle part first because the yellow is so light that I didn't want it. I didn't want to do red, orange, and then yellow and accidentally mix with my orange. Now I'm going to take a little bit of purple. I know this sounds weird and I'm going to mix, mix, mix it into my yellow because I want to go for a more goldeny type yellow or like a mustard type yellow. Okay. And it's always best to start out with just a little bit of purple at a time when you're putting it in yellow, because if you put too much in, you are going to have a brown. It's really gross. And so you just scrap it and start again. So it was yellow and some white mixed in and then a little bit of purple. And this is when I was wish, this is why I, when I'm wishing I had some paint or some glitter right now, but that's okay. It's still going to look fabulous. Okay. There's her gold little crown. All right. Clean, clean, clean my brush. Dry my brush. You have to dry. It was not clean enough. So rub, rub, rub on the bottom like a ballerina. That's what I tell the boys at school, just so they can moan and groan. 
wipe on the inside and then sweep on the napkin to dry. Okay, red is the very top of my rainbow. Kind of outline where that goes. It's gonna come across and then down just like that. And I do actually want to bring this out just a little further because I felt like my Sharpie sort of went down at an angle that I didn't like when I was drawing. Okay. Now I got to clean my brush again and grab some orange, but I don't have orange. So I'm going to take yellow and a little bit of, I didn't dry my brush, did I? Dry, dry, dry. Red. So I start with more yellow, less red. Mix, mix, mix. Grab some white, mix, mix, mix. So this is more yellow, just a little bit of red, and then a chunk of white in there. So I can make my own orange. And that's gonna go in between the red and the yellow. So orange is a secondary color, and red and yellow are primary colors. There we go. Gliding across the sky. Now the rainbow is not easy. So when you find yourself getting a little stressed or a little frustrated, we just, we just take a deep breath. This is just supposed to be fun, right? Okay, next we need some green in our rainbow and I am gonna add a little bit more blue to the screen that we made earlier for the grass. Okay. There we go. Sweep it down the rainbow. <coughs> Excuse me. Sweep it down the rainbow. And don't forget to bring your color over to the edges and then clean, clean, clean. Dry and blue. I'm going to put just a little bit of white into my blue just because it's pretty bold, the blue is. Now, I did not exactly draw my rainbow very perfectly, so I ran out of space on the left, ran out of space on this bottom right, so what's gonna happen is my purple, I'm just gonna have to go kind of rogue with my purple a little bit. But you know what, that's what happens sometimes, and that's okay, so I'm gonna grab some purple. You don't have to clean your brush, but you can got purple and then I'm going to put some white in there. Mix, mix, mix. And the reason I say you don't have to clean your brush is because you get purple by mixing blue and red, right? It's just, I think it's kind of hard to make purple. So I just use purple out of the jar. Okay. go right across the sky to the tail. From the tail across the sky to the beginning. This makes me think of the Somewhere Over the Rainbow song. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get all that color out of my brush. I had a lot of paint in there. Dry it. I know this is silly because I just washed it, but I'm going to dip in the straight purple and bring some straight purple in here because it's almost the same color as a tail. And I want it to contrast a little bit, at least right there. So I kind of darkened it up over here on the side that's closest to the tail. I could darken the whole thing though if I wanted to. Okay, 
Now, if you had like some iridescent glitter or silver glitter, you could totally paint the horn and then put some of that fun color. I mean, any color really on the horn if you wanted to. Um, or you can just paint it white or you can leave it the canvas color. And then I had told you um, at the end, you could go back and resharpie some of these lines, right? So like for example, right here on the eyes, that pink is dry enough. If your paint is not dry enough, don't do this because you will ruin your Sharpie and they're kind of expensive. <laughs> so you could go back and re-Sharpie all of your Sharpie lines if you wanted to. Don't have to, just if you want to. Just an idea. There we go. And so I could go over the whole unicorn again, and it doesn't take very long, and just redo these lines so they look really bold, and it just sort of cleans everything up. Um, parents, after, if you did this painting with your kiddos, if they'll let you, you could do their sharpening for them at the end um, after it's dry and just sort of clean it all up. And it's best if you can have your uh, canvas like oop, flat um, so that way uh, you have a more steady hand. Sometimes when we are drawing or tracing vertically like this, we kind of have a little bit of a shaky hand. Okay, I'm kind of afraid to trace the rest of it with Sharpie right at this moment because I can see that it's still shiny, which means that it's still wet. But after it's 100% dry, I can go back and re-Sharpie all of these lines and it's just gonna really bring it together and make it look so amazing. I know you guys have to be really proud of yourselves. I'm sure that you have done fabulous. I completely believe in you, especially if you were taking your time, pausing me when you needed to. I'm sure my students wish they could pause me, right? <laughs> in real life. Okay. There we go. So again, super, super simple design, super girly, but it's just fun and relaxing. Later, I'll finish sharpening the crown and the ears and the mane and the tail. Um, but for now, I think it is fabulous. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and giving me an opportunity to do something really girly girl. I don't usually do this, so this was really fun. Um, thank you, and remember, if you want to order an art kit, you can just head on over to our website and fill out a contact sheet, and we will be in touch. Thanks so much, and have a super wonderful day, and I cannot wait to do some more art with you.